TikTok. TikTok, get on to start. Let me turn my ringer. Hello, hello. I turn my ringer um off on do not disturb. Hello, hello, welcome, welcome. Hi, Billy and How are you? <laughs> you figured out how to put words up in there. That's cool. Hello, hello, Liz. Hello, hello. I'm going to give a couple of people more time to get up in here. I'm going to get started. Hello, hello. Hello, B. Hattie B. If I'm saying that right. Hey, Jay. Hi, hi. Hello, great. Thanks for asking. <laughs> Cool, cool. Hello, B. Den. Hello, George Perry. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Hello, Lady Harris. Let's see. Today, I wanted to talk about... Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Today, I wanted to talk about the uh, subconscious mind. All is well. I'm perfect. I'm perfect. I feel good. I just eat. I'm just eating from all day. I'm good and stuffed and relaxed. <laughs> okay. I don't see um Crone on here, but we're going to go ahead and get started. Anyway, because I want to, after I finish with this video, I actually want to upload it to my YouTube channel. So I'm going to just go ahead and get started and, and try to pay attention to these comments if they have questions while I'm talking. If not, if I miss it, I'll catch it on the way back. But um, pretty much uh, training the uh, subconscious mind, I want to leave this for whoever can digest it and be blessed in a journey because everyone is me pushed out. And so I'm just helping my reflections. I am from New Orleans, Louisiana. New Orleans, naturally New Orleans. <laughs> so I'm going to just jump in and get started. Hey, Crown, I see you there. Finally, I'm about to um, get started. I'm talking about uh, training the subconscious mind. And this is really um, things that I've learned in my journey, things that I practice currently in my physical reality, things that have brought me peace, mental clarity, joy, allowing me to attract the things that I have in my physical reality and, 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 and be able to do a little alchemy in my, in my life and realize who I am by knowing myself. And so a lot of people might think that life is a battle, but really <clears throat> life is a game. It's a mental game. And it's time for us in the physical reality to start playing the game to win. Playing the game as if we're the Christ conscious one, the one that we came for it to be. And so when, every, when you understand that everyone is you pushed out, you can further understand that your thoughts too is everything that you're experiencing, your physical reality. But this game of life, which is not designed to be a battle, it's designed to you, for you to experience yourself. The way that you win this game is by knowing thyself. And that means you have to go inside of yourself, inside of your mind, inside of your habitual thoughts, inside of you to understand you. And when you go inside of that, <laughs> that's when you meet God. So... I have some little bullet points on my little paper right here that I want to cover real quick and then we could talk if you all have something in particular you all want to ask me. But I have six bullet points and there are six things that I've practiced that I want to share with you on reprogramming your subconscious mind. And when I'm saying that, I am saying the reason why we're reprogramming this mind is because this is like the seat of our soul. So this is restoring our soul. Remember in the biblical text, he restores my soul. You have to work on this here in order to restore your own soul. So number one, I talked about this on one of my TikToks. It's rewriting your own sto your old story. So 
Rewriting your story, I talked about, and the reason why it's important to rewrite your story is because like when we're a baby, we from zero to seven years old, we're digesting all of other people's beliefs, how we're feeling, what we're experiencing, our trauma throughout life. So we want to rewrite that story because that very story might be the thing that's stopping you from financial gain, stopping you maybe from healthier relationships, stopping you from attaining jobs or whatever it is, because that old story is a subconscious thing. You don't really know this in the forefront, but it has you doing things over and over, thinking the same thoughts over and over, regurgitating it. And so when you, the thing about rewriting the story is that you want to mentally do this here through thought. You don't necessarily have to write this down. You mentally do this here through thought. And when you're doing this here through thought, you tell yourself the old story just one time. One time you say the old story and you cry your tears. That'll be your last tear that you cry from that old story. And then through thought, you tell yourself what your new story is going to be. So what you're doing here with your subconscious mind is that you're giving it a new memory. Because oftentimes we don't really remember the exact story anyway. Just kind of like when you have a dream. When you wake up during a day, the dream begins to fade away from your memory. And then by the end of the day, you don't really remember the color shirt, where you wore, were. Because you're trying to remember, but you're remembering the last memory of it. You're not actually remembering the initial time or what happened. So you're going to say the old story at least seven to 10 times. I mean, the new story, at least seven to 10 times. That way, when you think on your past, you only remember the new story because the old one you've allowed to fade out of your memory. That's number one in helping you reprogram the subconscious mind. Number two is affirmations. I have on my uh, YouTube channel some affirmations that you can listen to to lose weight for a financial gain or just to be loved and desired or whatever it is you're wanting in that area, just to boost your confidence and just to make your aura shine more, right? And so affirmations, the way that they work is that fa the fact that your subconscious mind has beliefs embedded in it already. So... If you have in your subconscious mind already old beliefs, beliefs is just something that you've told yourself over and over again that now it has become a law to you. Now it, you are governed by this belief, no matter what it is, because you've practiced it over and over and over again. So the way that the affirmations will work in your physical reality is that you must listen to them over and over and over again so you could create a new belief now. <laughs> so the thing about affirmations though, some people will start and you couldn't, you, you probably been guilty of this. You'll start listening to it and some of them don't feel right to your ear or you'll stop. But that is your subconscious mind stopping you <laughs> because it don't want to be reprogrammed. In other words, your subconscious mind tries to protect you in a sense that we're going to be positive about it. It protects you to stay on your, on your course or stay with your right now beliefs. So it'll, it, it'll begin to reject it, but that's the moment that you have to persist and keep on doing it and pretty much saying to it, no, 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 no. We want this mind to be in us now. So in doing the affirmations though, another thing, instead of just um, saying in my affirmations, for example, I don't just say, I'm worthy. I'm beautiful. I try to loop in old beliefs because as a man think it, so is he. So not only would you say, say, for example, you, you have a, a belief about money doesn't grow on trees. That may be the very thing that's stopping you from having the financial gain that you desire. So in one of the affirmations, I say money does grow on trees. That tree is deeply rooted in my subconscious mind, you know? So you want to add all of the negative beliefs, all of the perceptions of yourself and how you view others inside of your affirmation. So that's number two. The third thing that I practice is jumping, um, quantum jumping. And that's pretty much using your imagination 
jumping into the state of being that you desire to be in. So when you jump into a state of being that you t desire to be in, you got to go to that state by using your senses. You go to that particular state by embodying that state of being, by hearing what you want to hear when you get there, by smelling, by seeing, by tasting, by touching. You got to live in the in is what I'm saying. If you're um, quantum jumping, for example, so let's say you want to be a millionaire. We're going in our mind, using our human imagination, we're going to quantum jump over there on our yacht. We're not going to go to where the, the we lo won the lottery. Somebody gave us the million. No, 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 no. We're going to pass that all the way up and go to we have our money right now. We're jumping over there right now. And when we get over there, in our mind, in our human imagination, we're using our senses here. <laughs> and in using our senses, for example, I'm on my yacht. If I'm using my human imagination, I'm on my yacht. I have this nice flowy dress on. I can feel the breeze from the wind. I can, I can feel the sun beaming on my body. I can hear the butler in the back. I can hear the chef in the area where he's cooking my next meal or putting the dishes away because I just ate. You know, you got to really embody that state. I'm going to stand up on this rug and I can feel this rug in my between my toes. I'm in that state of being. I'm experiencing it in my mind right now with my senses. Because see, the thing about the subconscious mind, it don't know if you're there right now or not. So this is, this is how you're training it to get to the state of being that you want it to be in, whatever that state is for you. So when you do that, you do not care or ponder on um, how it's going to happen. That's not your business how. The universe or your subconscious mind is going to make way for you on how it's going to happen. Your job your job is going to be what is going to happen. You got to tell it what you want in the end. Your job is what and your job is when. Because when is not when is not no divine timing. No, 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 no. When is when you get in alignment completely with that state of being. That's when your when is going to occur. occur. So you are responsible for your what and your when when you're quantum jumping. Everything else, you leave it alone. You leave this physical reality alone. This is your lag right here when you look at it. But you stay you stay focused on what you're responsible for. Doing this repetitively is training your subconscious mind and it has to come forth in your physical reality because this is your creative power through God, being living God inside of you and you being part of God, right? Number four. Talk to it. <laughs> talk to yourself. That inner voice, talk to yourself. This really, you know, people say, oh, you're talking to yourself and you're crazy. Well, this is as long as you don't answer to yourself and all of this crazy stuff right here. Talk to yourself. The kingdom of God is within yourself. Give yourself some positive talk. So, and talking to yourself, the reason why you want to do this and why how it helps you to reprogram your subconscious mind is it be, because it'll help you really figure out what your triggers are, what that deeply rooted trauma really is all, ab all about. So you could ask yourself why. And you also want to talk to yourself to make sure you rewrote the right story. Because you might think in your in re your reality, like, say for instance, you get mad at your partner and um, you, you, you know, you go talk to yourself and you say, well, I got mad at him. And you, you ask yourself, well, why? Why did we really get mad? Well, because he was taking too long. I hadn't ate all day long and he was taking too long to fix the food. But why? Why did that upset you? Well, because I hadn't ate and, you know, it's a lot's been going on. But why? Well, well, I've always been like this here since... You know, since my mom, you know, been, been sick, maybe. 
But why? And you keep on, you keep on going, why, why, why? Well, it really don't have anything to do with mom. I, I kind of just maybe wanted attention. But why? <laughs> you know, and you keep on going to why. And you probably stumbled upon the fact that it really wasn't about him. It wasn't about mom. You probably had to go back to when you and your, uh, were still living with your parents. When you was a little girl or a little boy and, and, and you had so much pressure from your parents. So you want to talk to yourself and, and, and figure out why you act and respond the way that you do. Why do you have this particular trigger all the time? Why can't you experience love and joy? Why, why are you going up and down? So the perfect thing to do, thank you, babe. The perfect thing to do is to ask yourself why and get comfortable with talking to yourself, your subconscious mind, because this is where you meet God at. So that's very, very, very important. And also in talking to yourself, you got to tell it sometimes when it's giving you negative thoughts. No, 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 no. We're not thinking that today. No, I told you today was going to be a joyful day. No, why are, you, why are we thinking this? Show me love. Show me joy. And you tell it what you want it to show you. Instead of like if you're sad or whatever, for example, and you get into a rut, you can always talk yourself out of it. Why are we crying here? I rewrote that story already. Show me what laughter feels like. When was the last time I had a beautiful day? Show me joy. Show me peace. Show me happiness. And it will flash in front of you an image, an experience that you've already experienced because it has all of this memory inside of it. And you can jump on the feeling of whatever it gives you to pull you out of that crying stage that you're currently in. If you have this relationship with this mind of yours. Number five, play with it. Because like I said, life is a game and we want to play to win. So have fun with it. And the ways that I have fun with it is like if I'm going to the store or something, I'll just be like, I know I'm about to get the first Falcons, but I just know it. And then when it happens, see, oh, we good. Like it's as if, as if it's your best friend, so to speak. If I'm in the hallway in this corporate building that I go to and I press the button for the elevator, I sit there in my inner voice and I pick the one that I know that is going to come and get me. Not only is this helping you with your subconscious thought, but it is actually helping you with being more intuitive and it's helping you understand your power and realize that you're God and that you're creating your own reality. And once you create your own reality with little bitty things like which elevator going to come or telling your subconscious mind, show me a bird today or, or show me a butterfly and you see a butterfly that day, you begin to understand because you don't have no resistance for no butterfly, no bird. You want to start off with small things. You begin to understand your superpower. Wait a minute, I created this? And you begin to understand that you're really here in the physical reality alone experiencing, experiencing yourself, God. And nobody really like I in my reality, we have multiple realities. So in my particular reality, I'm this little black lady here. But I'm in a room right now and nobody is in this room right now. I'm a mother too, but my children don't even exist right now because I'm not giving attention to them. I am in this reality alone, experiencing myself, experiencing being here in this room by myself. <laughs> and anything that happens to me, my relationships, my financial status, um, my job, whether or not I get one or not, my house, just everything that I have, I thought it up. You create your own reality through thought, through your subconscious mind. Last but not least, I want to talk about um, before you go to sleep, how you can. One last thing that I want to share and then I'll look at the comments. I'm sorry. Before you go to sleep, I want to share with you is a pivotal moment for doing this, for reprogramming your subconscious mind. Because this is the moment when you are in like the uh, theta brainwave state. Remember how I um, 
talked about zero to seven when your subconscious mind is wide open and you were like a sponge in, in receiving everything that was happening. Well, you, your subconscious mind was open then, but it's also open when you're about to drift off to sleep. And as soon as you wake up in the morning, now I'm going to tell you how you could better understand what I'm saying. You ever had a dream that you remembered as soon as you woke up and, and you, as soon as you woke up, you knew the dream, but when you begin to open up your eyes, you had maybe about 10 seconds where the dream was really drifting away from your memory. It was like you were slipping so much into the physical reality that you couldn't remember the dream. And then about 20 minutes later, it's like, dang, what was that dream about? Well, you was coming from that place where your subconscious mind was really open. <laughs> And so that is a pivotal moment for you to create. You were coming from a realm of all knowing where all creation begins is what I'm saying. So in the morning, God, you should be planning your day instead of just walking up into your day, creating by default. You plan your day. You tell your day what you want out of it. This helps to program your mind. So you could wake up in the morning, you tell your day, today is going to be the day that they call me for that job. I just know it. You tell it whatever it is that you're wanting for that day. When you go to bed at night to help you reprogram your mind, right in that drifting off stage, you begin to recap your day and you recap it based upon going to that quantum jump in of where you want to be in your physical reality, you go there and you recap your day as if you lived your day there. Not the day you had, like today, and honestly, in the physical reality, what did I do today? Today, I worked, I did consultations, I, you know, put on makeup and clothes, da da da, went out, yeah, that's what I did today. I just got finished eating, da 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 da. That was my real physical day. But tonight, when I go to bed, let's say I wanted a yacht. The example I used earlier. I wanted to be a millionaire on a yacht, so to speak. When I go to bed tonight, if that's what I want to help to program my mind, since my subconscious mind don't know if it's real or not anyway, I would say, oh, in my human imagination, I'm laying on my pillow, eyes closed, and inner talk, saying, Oh, today was such a beautiful day on the yacht. I love, um, I love the food that the cooks made for me. I love being in abundance. I love this comfortable bed that I'm in. I love just having the ease of life and having no worries. This is beautiful. I checked my bank account today and I saw my millions. Da, 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 da. You saying that and you're walking yourself through the day when you did these things. And you just go to sleep, drift off to sleep. Oh my gosh, it feels so good to be a millionaire. Oh my God, it feels so good to have the desires of my heart. It feels so good to not to ever have to work again. It feels good to have multiple houses all across the world. It feels good to travel and to be on this yacht today. And I could be anywhere I want to be on tomorrow. Oh yeah, this is the life that I always wanted. And you drift off to sleep with that smile on that face and you're going into that other realm where everything is created from and stems from. So basically you're going there with it on your mind. So when you come back in the physical reality, you could bring it forward. So those are the six things that has helped me create my reality and be blessed behind measured and brought me so much of joy and peace. And I'm excited about it. And I wanted to share it to my reflections because of the simple fact that when I move, you move. We are collective consciousness here. And so we're grouped together and we're all singing one song. So being that it's a collective consciousness, we I could expand, but there might be this one at the very, very, very end that's lagging, maybe on a slow bus. I'm, I look at it like this here. I need to help that one that's lagging because since we're collective consciousness, I need to expand more and I need to help you expand more since we're moving together, but we all sing in one song. So I'm hopeful that even if it's just one person that was on this live, that you begin to implement this in your life 
and that you begin to monitor your thoughts, thought by thought, whether it is uh, a job or money or whatever, you thought that up. So all you got to do is begin to play the game of life and think the opposite. Because we're all master manifestors, even the homeless men underneath the bridge. They're manifesting. And every day that they wake up, they're getting what they want. They are master manifestors underneath that bridge. They're getting what they want. More poverty. Because the blessings of God are yea and amen. Universe, universe ain't, 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 it's just giving you. It ain't work. You said, like I said earlier, you responsible for what? And the universe is going to give you or your subconscious mind is going to give you your what? No matter what that what is. So I wanted you all to get that. Let me stroll back up here and see. Because I, I wasn't I wasn't reading nothing to be honest with y'all. Let me see. Hey there. I took a nap and I got up. Thank you for joining uh, Cron. The only way to know Yeshua is by his holy words and living according to that is nothing else. Okay. Bless your heart, baby. I did a video about living inside of the box when meanwhile there's a boundless universe. And even, even if you have that walk of life, whether you believe in Yeshua, whether you believe in Buddha, Krishna, how about one day you take a moment and think about it like this here. Let's scratch all of the physical beings out because before the physical, it must be spiritual. So let's go to the spiritual and look at us all as energy, frequency, and vibration. The, what we were before we came in this avatar suit. And so if you could understand that all things are energy, frequency, and vibration, you could understand the Yeshua walk of life, the Jesus walk of life, the Buddha. And you understand life in its totality. You could also understand like gravity, for example. Gravity, um, you might not be able to see it, but if you stand, if I stand up, I'm going to be on this ground because gravity has a force, force meaning energy that's going to keep me on this ground. Okay. Well, your thoughts have a force too. Your thoughts have a force. When you think them, they go out, they go out with a force, but they must bring you something back. Either they're going to bring you back your desires or they're going to bring you back your greatest fear. Now that has really nothing to do with the, the Jesus, the Buddha, and the Krishna. That's just a law that nobody really wants to pay attention to because they can't see him. But I wish you the best on your journey. I just wanted you to see the energetic side of it. If you can understand that just for a moment. Just for a moment. Let's see. Let's see. Who is this? What I can learn from someone that can understand it. Oh, always oh, you again. Ha heavy, timeless. What I can learn. Let me read this. What I can learn from someone that conjures up demonic deities as the latter with those images. I don't get that one. Hey, Queen. Hey, uh, Keisha. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Yes. Leave the house to the source. Exactly. Yes. Happy Valentine's Day. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. I hope you enjoyed the end of your week with a blessing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Exactly. Okay. Y'all just agree in here. I'm trying to see if they have any questions in here. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. All right, I don't want to see any questions, but how are you? Maybe I went too far up. They got a lot of comments. Hi there, Miss B. So thank you for joining me. That's me a lot, luxury lot. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, that's hey, how you doing? Thank you for joining. I appreciate you. Sometimes I feel guilty when I get my hair done. Wow, that look, hearing you speak. Okay, thank you, thank you. I don't see any questions up in here. I just wanted to check before I left. I appreciate you all joining me so much. Thank you so much for being here. And I'm hopeful that you're getting, I know already that you're getting a lot out of my TikTok. And even if you're not there yet on your journey, you know, just, just, just rest in knowing that all is well and you're perfect where you are. 
there's no rush to get this. You know, it's just something that is my passion that I love sharing with others. There's no rush because we are eternal beings experiencing ourselves. There's absolutely no rush at all. Hey, Rasta Melanie, I see you. Why do we feel guilty when we are surpassing our family members and friends? That's actually, hey, Trey. All things, amen. And so it is. Ah, uh, thank you, thank you. That is a choice. Feeling guilty, that's a choice. That that's a choice. You I honestly don't feel guilty. I have a family and a lot of them, well, my mom is actually here. Thank you, Miss B, for being here. My mom is actually here. You know, a lot of my siblings, you know, they're not ready. You know, in matter of fact, they push me off in a, in a jokingly type way. But I just know I have this understanding that everybody is on their own journey and they set their alarm clock to wake up for whenever they're ready. You know, I don't feel any guilt or whatever because I look at them. When you begin to look at people through the eyes of God and see the good in everybody, and know that everybody is on a journey. You you don't have guilt anymore. You know, I want the best for them in their physical, re physical reality. I do. But they're me pushed out. And so I can look at them and smile and be like, yeah, I remember. I used to think like you. I used to eat like you. Yeah, but I'm in a different place now. And maybe if you practice that, that's what I do. Matter of fact, during my day in the physical reality, you know, when I'm walking past somebody, just a random somebody in my inner in my inner voice, I'll just look at them and and I'll smile and be like, the divine in me, reverence is div divine in you, you know, and I admire them because I I'm saying to them in my inner voice, you're God, you're God, you're God. This experience is, is God. God is always teaching because I'm always learning and winning here. And so when you always, when you're in alignment with yourself, you're not really feeling any guilt and pain and shame and sadness and stuff because it's impossible you, for you to feel those things at a low frequency when you are on high frequency. And so this is like, like in a biblical text. Remember like when Jesus had the lady that wanted to touch the hem of his garment to be made whole. The lady, she had, I think, the issue of blood because the Christ conscious one was in alignment with himself. He knew that somebody touched him, regardless of the fact that there were so many people in the crowd. He was like in the allegory text, who touched me? And so being in alignment with yourself you're just in the perfect frequency where you're not feeling anything low. You feel the low ones around. You know the low ones are around you, but you could even make them healed. And so it's so important that we stay in alignment, even like with death. If you are in alignment, I've consulted with people that when they are in alignment with themselves, they'll tell me, you know, because they once felt so sad and depressed. And I'll, I'll tell them, I'll tell them, like your son, if it's a lady who, I remember this one lady whose son had died and she was just really so sad. I was like, I understand, but to live is to die. And you being on this, this supportive team of mothers against drunk drivers and, and constantly doing that, you're attracting all of the drunk driving stories. You're attracting all the little boys in the neighborhood. You know them. The, even when you turn on the news, you, you hear about them because you're attracting that. I'm like, your son would want you to live, move on and be happy. And I promise you, if you get alignment and you find something to be happy about, something in knowing that he's your angel and he's with you, I promise you, when you get in alignment, he's going to be right there because everything is with you when you are in alignment. And she called me one day and she was like, oh, I was in the kitchen and, and I was washing dishes and I could have sworn I smelled my son and I felt his presence. I was like, yes, because you were in alignment. When you are in alignment, you are worth more to everybody. This is another reason why I want to share this with you. Because when you are in alignment, you're so powerful. You become the Christ conscious one. And you being in alignment just sets you up for everything. Remember in the biblical text when it says, when I be lifted up. 
I will draw all men unto me. So when you lift yourself up and get in alignment, you begin to draw things and experiences and happiness and joy and all of these things to you when you're in alignment. But when you're not in alignment, you are good for nothing. Nothing. Just like when you go outside in the physical reality, you cannot start a car if you don't have no gas in the car because it's not in alignment to flow. It's not in alignment to go nowhere. So it is so important to stay in alignment and you don't feel guilty. You don't feel depressed. You just know that all things is God and everything is working out for your good. So focus on you is what I'm saying here. Let your frequency be so powerful that you're in alignment and it's bouncing off of the people, the tellers. You know, if they mad and they don't like their job, but when you walk up in there, hey, how, how you doing? You look so beautiful. What's going on with you today? They're just free spirit. And then when you leave, they go back to being a depressed person they walk because you walked in the door. You put them in alignment with your energy alone. Let's see. I bet I missed some. I started running my mouth. I got caught up. I just get in my zone sometimes. Let's see. Yes. As first it felt lonely, but seeing people through the eyes of love has been a game changer. Yes, it has. And you and you ask yourself, what is the lesson that this person what for for me to learn? Because it's only you learning, learning how to get to know thyself just a little bit more, a little bit deeper. It's always a lesson in everything. And it's never gonna be where you mastered it because there's no it to get because what happens in the in with us even in physical form when we die when we know more in the physical reality what we're doing is we're bringing back our energy our experience back to the energy our experience our lifetime we're bringing it back to god we're bringing it back to source so source becomes greater and greater and greater source the source of god so there's no it to get because god in its totality is always expanding so by it expanding, there's never really going to be a finish line for us in the physical reality. So there's no it to get. There's no it. It's just lessons, winning, playing the game, rinse and repeat. Lesson, winning, playing the game, rinse and repeat. <laughs> and you think about it like that there and all will be well. Yes, it's like when I said I wanted a Lexus RX350. Oh, I had one of those. Let's see. I started seeing it everywhere. Yes. Because the subconscious mind now is showing you little little pictures of, oh, okay, you're changing your mind to this. It's, 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 it's penetrating in the subconscious mind. So it's telling you, and you, and you should look at those things and be so excited, like, oh, it's getting in there. The old thoughts are being dwindled away and the new thought is coming. And you should look at that and say, oh, okay, okay. It picked up the signal. Mine is on its way. I used to want a car. I had luxury cars in the past, like Lexus, BMW, um, Mercedes. I had all of that, but I wanted the car that I have right now, which is a simple, simple car, really reliable. It's just a Honda Accord, but I I don't want to say it like that. It's just a hundred core. It's actually my dream car, but it's so simple. It's my dream because I manifested it. And I used to sit there at my desk and I would play this, you know, how you go on the Honda website and they'll, t they'll show you the 360 view of it, you know, turning around and it on the little wet road and all of that. And I would sit there and I would imagine that I smelled the car, that I was in the car, you know, while it was, you know, playing on the computer or whatever. And I would imagine the new car smell. And I'd be like a little kid just looking at the computer screen, like, oh, it's so pretty. Oh, those alloy wheels and the steering wheel. Oh, it glides so perfectly. Oh, look how it is, you know, when it's raining outside or whatever. And I'll get so, I'll milk that feeling so much because it's all about imagination. I'll milk that feeling so much. I got my call. <laughs> I got my call and my coworkers was like, oh my God, you got it. And everybody came running outside because they knew that I was in that office once a day, imagining me being in that car. This is how you bring things forth in the physical reality. You have to use your human imagination. I believe in the biblical text. This is why it says, um, if you do not come to uh, the Lord as um, a child, you won't make it into the kingdom because a child has that human imagination where it could imagine and create, 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 manifest, imagine, be in that moment. You know, children normally have the little, the little, um, 
what they call them, the imaginary friend. You know, they'll have the imaginary friend. Children think they could fly. They think they could do everything. But when we become adults, we don't want to believe in that. You know, we just know this is the physical. Bob, you cannot be such and such because we, we get downloaded with all of these limited thoughts when we are really limitless and boundless. Let me see. Let me see where I left off at. But seeing people to the eyes, God, yes, I agree. Okay. Them talents, absolutely. Hello, and teach me, sis. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that I didn't miss out on anything. But yeah, it is really about playing the game, using your human imagination to move things. And I promise you all, it is with my knowing that you can change your reality thought by thought. Thought by thought. Good, good. Hey, Ruby, I didn't even know you was up in here. Thought by thought. Ask and ye shall receive. So how do we ask? Hey, Dion, how do we ask? We ask through thought. When you think it, you imagine it, so shall it be. But, but check this out, though. Wait, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Now, this here is about those things that you have maybe resistance for. You know, the millionaire status, if that's what you desire, the job that you've been trying to get and all of this year. This is for those things that you have the resistance for. But right now, today, you are a master manifester. If you look at your relationship, let's talk about everybody probably had a relationship that, um, that they're no longer in. You know, that ended for, it don't even matter what the reason was. Think about that relationship right now. That relationship ended because you thought it up. If you get real, 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 real with yourself, maybe you had some fear. You Maybe you thought, oh, I don't, I don't think this here going to work. Whatever it was, me, oh, I think he going to cheat on me. He looked like a cheater. And so shall it be. So you, we already, every day, whatever happened to you today in your physical reality, you thought it up. And it might be a little sensitive to some, but even if somebody died in the physical reality, they thought it up. All deaths or suicide even because of the fear of dying. You think of everything because God brings life and God brings death. You came forth at the appointed time through thought and you leave at an appointed time through death. You are running the show God in the physical reality with everything that you do. Whether you are overweight right now, you thought it up because really and truly, since everything in the physical reality is God, all of the food, and, and I've been through this here. I, I, I ventured off and became a vegan. <laughs> but let me tell you something that I know. Even though I choose not to indulge in meat, I know this one thing for sure. All is God. All of it. It's the thought that we have when we're eating the food that makes us gain the weight. It is holding on to this, this, this harmony with our emotions when somebody do us wrong that's clogging up our cells, that's bringing acid to our body. And so you remember in the biblical text, it says, it is not what man put inside of his mouth that defiles him. It what's, it's what comes out of it. That is true. That is true. We healing ourselves mostly with, with, with thoughts, and the spoken word, oh, oh, this here job is killing me. Oh, such and such is killing me. And so shall it be. So we really be, got to be mindful of the game that we play in the spoken word. Because it's manifesting, asking ye shall receive. Hmm. I don't know if y'all was ready for that. Let me read these comments. Let's see. You're teaching us, and I believe, I, okay, okay. <laughs> so even with our thoughts on food, I used to talk on my channel about, if you go down and scroll down on my TikTok, I used to talk about that a lot. I went on a break from TikTok for about seven, 
seven months, I think it was. But I'm going to let y'all know today, I'm, I'm not going to be talking about no food. If you want to talk about, you know, the alkaline diet and in in the herb and all of that, you can go and look at the old videos that I have. But I know it is with my knowing. See, I'm evolving on this journey too. It's my knowing. It ain't it ain't the food, baby, because all of the food is God. This is why in the New Testament, you know, they have an old in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, they talk about yeah, you don't eat the pork and. And you don't need to this and that. But Jesus came back and Jesus, when you rise to your Christ conscious, when you will understand this, when Jesus came back in the allegory text, he was like, no, 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 no. Just bless your food. <laughs> bless your food. And if you believe, if it's deeply rooted in your subconscious mind that it will not harm you, nothing shall by no means harm you. And I'm not just saying this to say this. Now, some of you in the physical reality have to go through this to see this for yourself. But just like we descended from being God to come in a physical reality to ascend back up to become God again, you might have to go through the stage of the eating the meat, descend, and come back up after you're a vegan to realize this. Some of us have to have the hands on practice for it. But for some people, they don't have to do nothing. Some people, when the doctor, there's like two types of people. When the doctor tell one person that, that they have some type of sickness, you know, one person going to change their diet and do all kinds of things, you know, in the physical reality. But one person be like, oh, no, I'm not sick. I am healed. And so they quantum leaped over there. They took the shortcut over there. They didn't have to change nothing but a mind because it's a mental game. And if you let this mind be in you, you don't have to do the hard work. If you stop with the limited beliefs and get outside of the box, you don't have to do the hard work in the physical because the things that show up in the physical reality stem from the physical, I mean, from the spiritual already. So if you go over and, and take care of the matters of the spiritual, which is the subconscious mind, you take care of those matters. You ain't got to worry about doing the hard work in the physical. But for me, I did the hard work along my journey and then realized, oh, now I get this here. Now I see this here, that it was a mental game, that all is mental that the alchemy should be happening within my mind by letting this mind be in you, by thinking it not robbery to be equal with God. Those things that are, I, I, I always had to go to church when I was a little girl, so it's really deeply embedded in me. But those things I can say, oh, now I see what this is all about here. But I had to go through it though. I had to go through it. And now that I'm in a position to help other people, I just want you to see the big picture of all of this being God. And maybe you might not use it right now, but I know when I speak this spoken word, I'm speaking to your subconscious mind. And it might, some of you might get it tonight and start working on it tonight. But even if it take you, the others, other lifetimes to get it, you remember in your subconscious mind, the lady with a little red scarf on her head with a little red shirt. I've heard this before. That resonates with me for some reason because somebody told me this before because the subconscious mind remembers all. It remembers all and it won't forget this. So I'm downloading this inside of your mind today for you to use it for the moment whenever you're ready to experience the totality of who you are and what you're made of and what you're capable of doing in this physical reality. Let me see. Let me see what I left off at. Um, let's see. Great teaching, I believe it. Hey, Liza. I move well. Hey, hey, I see some happy hands over there. Everything is God. Everything. You know, so we have like yin and yang. <laughs> we have hot, cold. You know, we have a uh, light worker. Some people want to get on the light worker side. Some people on the black magic side. But you put all of that together, God is just experiencing itself at different frequencies. All is God. And to and to 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 disown that um, in the biblical text, it says, "How could a kingdom divided against itself stand?" 
You know, you, you have, for example, I did a TikTok on here today that I didn't post yet, but I was talking about a quarter. A quarter, whether it's it, it, it stays on heads or, t- or tails, it's still a quarter. So God is life. God is death. God is the beginning and the end. God is the good and the so-called bad. If we were talking about God being like that and the polarities of God, it's still God. It's not a quarter, but it's still God. God have all sides. But, uh, but people just want to experience one side of God. You know, just the good stuff. You know, just when they're getting blessed. But when they're not getting blessed, oh, this is a devil. Or when they want to do something bad, oh, the devil made me do it. No, no, no. That was God. You was just vibrating at a di- different frequency, at a lower frequency of God. But God is all that exists. You can't, you wouldn't be able to see it if it wasn't God because God is the creation. You see, it's the thoughts. Yeah, it's all about your thoughts. What about being ghosted? What about it exactly, um, Coco? What about it? Intentions, food. Yes, I always thank source for my taste buds. Definitely, definitely. Because we're just eating the universe. We've been eating a part of God because that's all that's here. This camera is God. This wall is God. Because we go back to the energy side of it. Everything is energy, frequency, vibration. And so these things are just vibrating at a different speed. But it's God. God is all there is. God is the energy. Let's see. Being ghosted leads you to a place of healing. I have been recently led to this journey. Yeah. Lone Star. Is that the same person that asked me about what is? What about the Coco? Coco God is asking me about that. And... Lone Star is actually telling me, yeah, it does. It does. And you know, since I've been uh, talking about the um, the law of assumption, you know, they have a lot of people that <laughs> they, I guess they get out of bad, so seemingly relationships and then they maybe go to law of assumption for um, maybe a relationship, you know, to get that particular person back, you know. Even spirituality, you know, the law of attraction, maybe they go there for relationships or, you know, love, you know, when you're at your low point, you know, maybe you do a little searching for things like that there. But here's the thing, if any of you all are out there like that, I will say to you, hmm, look at it like this here. Take that man or take that woman out of the equation and think about how how good maybe it was to be with that person, right? Think about how good it was. Maybe you 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 allowed yourself to love like you maybe never loved before and you got a taste of that. Really and truly, you were tasting your love. That was you. Yeah, that was you. But... What I want you to see here is if you just take that man or that woman off of the pedestal that you put them on and you decide to put yourself there and you begin to experience your own love and you begin to dedicate some time, dedicate some time to to love on yourself and to pamper yourself and to get yourself in alignment. (laughs) What you'll find for one is the fact that that person you could carry that person with them, with you, because that person is not separate from you. <laughs> that person actually is you. <laughs> and so look at it as if you and your subconscious mind knew that you wanted to come forth in physical reality to get to know thyself. So what better treat than to give yourself than a partner that you love so much that you long for that that was taken away seemingly from you in order for you to get your little ass in alignment with yourself like you need to put yourself back on that pedestal like you need to in order for you to get that particular person back and see so so you you can pretend that you played a game on you (laughs) for you to get to know yourself because sometimes in life It's so funny that our blessing be behind the very thing that we don't want to embrace. 
So now life is forcing you to embrace this alignment, to embrace this opportunity to get to know yourself. And then you get your little treat of that person that you really, really like. But now when the person come back, you're a better version of yourself. And now you know that it is so important now that I stay in alignment with myself. First and foremost, that I, that I can, can wash away all of this trauma, all of these negative thoughts, put myself in alignment and I meet the wholeness of me instead of the broken version of me. And then when I get back in that relationship, when it comes back for me the next time around, now my thoughts are better. Now I'm not sitting up there pushing him away, which is how this person no longer is in your life because you created that because you're a master manifester in that area and your thoughts pushed him away. Now you know, now you have time to get in alignment with those thoughts to increase your frequency, to know thyself, <laughs> to better yourself, and you meet this amazing version of yourself again. Look at it that way, because a lot of people, you know, they, they want what they want, and God, God can get whatever it is he or she is wanting in the physical reality, but do the work. That way, when you get what you're wanting from that particular person, you won't have that wobble where he leaving, he or she is leaving again. Because you'll be so much in alignment with who you are that no, no, I'm on this pedestal. He, he loves me. He's not going nowhere. <laughs> you may be so aligned with your affirmations. No, no, no. I'm lovable. Mm -mm. I'm delicious. I'm the chosen one. I'm the best thing that this person has ever had. He can't stop thinking about me. He can't stop longing for me. I'm the only one in the physical reality he desires. I'm the only one he sees. I'm the only one he thinks about in the middle of the night. I'm the only one that he's running behind. You see where I'm going here? Because you are so lifted up. And what I say, just like in the biblical text, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. <laughs> That's a personal thing. That's for you, God. Let's see, being ghosted leads to a place of healing. Yes, it does. It definitely does. I put too much of my power outside of me. I hope that helps. I put too much of my power outside of me. Mm. Clarify that. Um, oh, that's that's Lone Star. She was adding to what she said earlier up here. Let me see what she said up here. Um, not about what she said up here. Uh, I done ran my mouth so much. I can't find a comment no more. But um, you shouldn't, it's, your power is within you. So I'm not sure what that means no more. I'm sorry, babe. I did it backwards too, but I needed it that way. Not really backwards, but you, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sometimes it, we go that way. I mean, it's, in and out, in and out. But we, we're doing that through everything, through breathing, in and out, through our thoughts, in and out, you know? So just as long as we get it. <laughs> well, as long as we understand it, because there's no it to get. But just as long as we understand it is what I'm trying to say here. Great example. Okay, okay. Real talk. If we believe anything other than God, we're creating division. Yeah, we really are, because that's all... That's all there is. Nothing else. I definitely pushed her away. Oh, I see what you're saying now, Lone Star. Okay, dropping gems right now. Beautiful. I wish I could record this. <laughs> My soul knows that she is the one. I just was in company already. So I'm preparing myself. Yeah, and just look at it that way. Because you're preparing yourself by getting yourself in alignment with yourself. <laughs> And you're making yourself a better version. And just, just know that every day that you, you're getting there, you know, no quantum jump and be there. So a good quantum jump for a person like that will be there. Go to the end for whatever it is in that relationship you're desiring to be the girlfriend, boyfriend, to be married, to, you know, go on trips together, to, to see them more, for them to move, you know, in or whatever it is you desire. Jump over there. See yourself in the end with the babies or whatever 
it is you're wanting in your physical reality. That's a good quantum jump for you but when you're going to sleep at night and you're so happy because you, you know, you've done the work and you're whole and he's whole and, and there's no, no crazy disputes that, that are really petty. You know, you're not thinking all of that crazy stuff maybe that you thought in the past, no crazy arguments anymore. You're just so refreshed in your mind, in your thought while you're doing the quantum jumping and so shall it be. So shall it be. But the most beautiful thing about this, I want to stress, is that you are getting to know thyself. You've done the inner work. And when you do this inner work here, you can be, do, or have anything in the physical reality. And it doesn't stop at a person, you know, abundance, you know, you uh, generational wealth, you know, whatever it is you are wanting, you can manipulate energy of other people in your reality by this work. If you, if you choose to do it and they've been to your, your will pretty much. Let's see. Um, how do I heal the narrative of my distorted subconscious mind? Uh, I'll put this, um, video on my YouTube channel and you could watch. I, I gave um, six six of my um, tips of things that I have been doing in my physical reality and I'm sure a couple of them, if not all of them, will be helpful for you. Now she can get through this. There you go. That's what it's all about. It's your love. And so your love is really the healer. Your love, like they say in the biblical text, love heals all. So your love is healing it all. You know, that sounds so beautiful. I love that comment right there. Let's see. Um, so how do you know the difference between a toxic person or our toxic behaviors? <laughs> it's always you. It's always you. Mm -mm. We... On this particular live, and it, it might be a lot for some, but you know how they go to the little AA meetings, the Alcohol Anonymous, whatever. The first thing they do is they got to admit that they have a drinking problem. And so here I really, I'm not trying to be hard on nobody, but you got to admit and understand this one important thing. That you're God. And everything, everyone is you, just like the totality of God. Everyone is you pushed out. So all of this narcissist, this toxic people stuff, we're creating that. Cause it because like I was saying earlier, when you're in alignment, <laughs> you can make people bend to your will. You think them differently. You let go of that toxicity of every of this one particular person being toxic to you. And you see them through the eyes of God as not being that character anymore. It's always us. It's a piece of us in there. And one of the six that I mentioned early is to go in and ask yourself why. Talking to yourself. Why? So since we know that that the so-called toxicity exists outside of us. We can go inside of us and get to the core of, okay, if the toxicity is there and I'm getting mad at the toxicity, the perfect question for me to ask myself in that example would be, why do I care? Why? If it's not me, why is it triggering me? Why? That'd be a perfect place to start. <laughs> because nothing can trigger you, at least something inside of you resonates with that. Just like the people on that particular video when I did the narcissistic um, video, the people that got triggered were the ones that were really the video was for. Other people was like, yep. No, they don't exist in my reality. You're right about that. I've been saying that long, long time ago. But only the ones that it triggered had an issue. So when you find yourself getting triggered or noticing the toxic or toxicity or whatever, and it's bothering you, then you got to ask yourself why. 
Because it's something in you that's being pushed out. It's your subconscious thoughts that's being pushed out and say, hey, you got this inside of you. I just want to let you know, hey, look right here. This here is inside of you. Why? Even your dreams. The dreams come at night to show you, hey, this is inside of you. What do you, if you have a dream of somebody running, chasing you and you, Hey, in the physical reality, you have a, a resistant part of you that you're afraid of and you're running. Hello, this is your subconscious mind. Something's in here. Can you fix it, please? <laughs> Pretty much that's how it's going, babe. Let's see. Oh, somebody said that's Will. Hi, Will. I love your wall blanket. Okay, <laughs> thank you, babe. Yes, I understand. But just because I changed my perception doesn't mean the other person has, right? No, 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 no. It doesn't because you have to change the other person. Since everyone is you pushed out, when you change, the other person going to change, right? When you change your mind, the other person going to begin to change to your mind because you're now seeing them through the eyes of God. But you also have to get rid of the, uh, the negative belief or the mindset that that other person is toxic. So you have to tell yourself, I see the improvement. I'm so proud of him. I'm so proud of his growth. Look at how he's changed. I'm happy for him. He's God experiences himself evolving. But at the same time within you, you have to be changing yourself. Because as within, so without. If you're coming from religion on earth as it is in heaven. That's how it works. It's all a reflection. Everybody's a reflection of you that you're meeting. Or bring it forth. And to change them, you have to go in and change yourself. That's how it works. Live life from the inside out. Bingo, bingo. That's long star. Bingo, bingo, bingo. <laughs> Where did you get it? Actually, I got that when I was in um, Sedona, Arizona, on a heart chakra retreat. The, um, me and my girlfriend went to a little vendor and they were selling it there. I don't remember the name of it, but. Arizona is where I got that from. I just be, I just dreamed of being chased by family. So there you go. So something going on in that family that you have to ask yourself why to get to the root of. You're not maybe wanting to be around them, some type of resistance there, but your subconscious mind knows the re, the um the issue is there, so it's bringing it to your dream. That's that's how it works here. And, and they say in the biblical text, I just thought of something in the biblical text. It says in a dream, in the, um, in the vision of the night, God um, opens up um, the heart of man and gives them their orders and instructions, something like that in the biblical text. That's pretty much what happens a lot of the time when you dream. And even in the nighttime, the, um, for me, in the nighttime, actually, I get my ideas of my TikTok. That's why sometimes y'all see me on a TikTok and I'm playing a recorder because I woke up in the middle of the night and I was inspired to say those particular words. I record myself because in the nighttime, when the subconscious mind is wide open, once again, like I shared earlier, that's when we really, really at a precious state of being in, in and out of that other consciousness where all creation exists. And for me at that point, my messages come through. That's how I wrote my book. That's how I learned about a lot of my herbs and stuff that I wrote in the book. That's how I learned and became a vegan. A lot of things, pretty much all of the things in my spiritual journey came at night when I was sleeping. So go figure. That's pretty cool that we operate like that, though. Let's see where I left off at. Um, I just dreamed of being chased by family. Would you say the separation happens so you heal? Um... Who is this here? Sh Shara? I think I'm saying Sh S A H A R S. Um, the separation happens so you can heal. I would agree, but let's go a little further back. The beautiful thing about the separation would be that, okay, so that you can get yourself back in alignment and get to know yourself. But the reason why it happened is because you picked up a belief of that happened, you know, because like in the in the spiritual world, you know, 
Okay, let me go back to religion. In religion, we believe we just a little G kind of gods. We got to go through this here long, long, long suffering. And, you know, um, if God don't do anything else for us, he's done enough. You know, that kind of mindset. That kind of trickles over to spirituality in a sense with like the twin flame. I got a TikTok on this here too coming about um, <laughs> signing up for the separation phase, so to speak, with twin flame. When you sign up for that, you're putting that in your subconscious mind and it has to show its face. And so when you sit here in a physical reality on a TikTok and you listen to them people that say, Oh, he is runner and a chaser and, and, you know, it's going to be hard for the twin and he's got to run and you sign up for it. When you digest that thing and be like, yeah, maybe, maybe, yeah, he's running because we got to go and separate. We got to. So you didn't accept it. Don't sign up for that. Don't sign up for no long suffering. You're boundless. You're limitless. You can be, do, or have anything. Don't, don't accept that in your subconscious mind. So and, and when you accept those type of things, it's so shall it be because the blessings of God are yea and amen. You accept it and uh, universe got to make way and show you just that, which you accept it. So when you go in, if you believe in that type of thing, you go in and you say, Nah, nah, ain't gonna be no running. Ain't gonna be no chasing. Mm -mm. Not in my experience. I'm not accepting that. And you just flick those little suckers on, on the little swipe of the TikTok and don't, don't, don't accept that. Just like some of them people when they be reading with the cards and they trying to tell you what your life gonna be like or whatever. If, if the first sentence don't sound happy, go lucky, don't listen to the second sentence. Girl, bye. Don't leave a comment so they don't pop up no more. <laughs> if it ain't good, I don't want to hear it. You got to give your attention to that which is good. You got to find the good in life and throw out all of that bad. That so-called bad, rather. Because the bad works for your good. Really, you cannot lose. But if you're on this journey to begin with, you want to focus on the things that's going to work easy for you. You want to play the game and, and win that sucker at a, at a steady pace. You don't want to be, oh, 10 years from now, now I see what the lady with the red shirt was talking about in, 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 in 2032, telling, saying that with none of us around, you know? No, don't sign up for that. That's how, that's how that happened. You signed it up in here and it came and it had to show. But you could fix it really easy by getting that up out of there and say, no, my story not going to be like that. You know, this is if you have a person in mind, this is the one. I just know it. I, you know, I'm lovable. I've healed my trauma. This is a new beginning for me. This is my season. All things are working out for me. I am perfect. He is perfect. Life is perfect. I know how to find the good. I love myself. He loves me. I have myself on this pedestal. There's no losing. I only win. I only excel. I only progress in life. That's how you get up there. That's how you do that. You're beautiful. Oh, thank you, babe. Oh, the comments jump really, really fast. Let me see. Um, okay. Taking my notes. Oh, yeah. Go ahead or take some notes. It's 1010 angel numbers. Yeah. That's beautiful. How about when you dream about someone before you ever met or seen them? Let's see. Hey, Kiki. Thank you for joining, Kiki. How about if you dream about someone before you met or seen them? Well, since your subconscious mind knows all, we've already had had experiences with one another. Um, <laughs> so it's like our energy know of all that exists already. So it's a familiarity. What what is the uh, dream and telling? Is it showing you any resistance? Is it peaceful? It's the energy of the dream more than anything that you should pay attention to. If it's telling you, showing you something, you know, fearful, it's telling you where your fear is lying at, you know. If it's showing you something that's maybe on another frequency higher, it's showing you where you're in alignment. It's either somewhere where you're out of alignment or somewhere where you're in alignment. And so you know that by the feeling of what's going on. Oh, love your accident from 
Sweet, your accent from Sweden here. Oh, thank you, babe. Thank you. I'm sure you have a nice one too from Sweden. But yeah, that's pretty much how it goes, even with dreams. You know, you have the dreams that'll show you what's going on in the subconscious mind. People showing you what's going on in the subconscious mind. Your physical reality is showing you what's going on in the subconscious mind. So what we need to do in the physical reality is start doing the work on the subconscious mind. So what we really want or desire can show up. And this is what we came for it for. We are master manifestors. We are creators, creating. We're God experiencing ourselves. And so we could have fun with this. It's really, really fun to, un to get to this unfoldment place in life. It's really, really fun. So let's have fun. Let's see. It was you helping me take out a black coat. <laughs> a dream of me? Oh my God, that's funny. Taking a black coat with bees out of my house. Wow, that sounds refreshing. Obviously, at least I was um, bringing some hope up in there, getting the bees out of there. Maybe simply me, uh, the black coat, representing the darkness, maybe, you know, of not, of the unknown, and me bringing consciousness to to the forefront, because bees are very conscious. So, so maybe it could symbolize that. You know, the other day, it's crazy. Y'all say something about a dream. The other night, rather, I had a dream. And I don't I don't want to say I don't care about celebrities, but I'm not a TV watcher. I have like TVs in the house and stuff. I don't turn them on or anything like the Super Bowl stuff. I don't didn't really know of that until I turned on TikTok today because, um, you know, people was Posting Mary J. Blige, I guess she did something in a little Crip Walk thing. That's how I know of that because I didn't put, spend my time watching that. But anyway, I said that say I'm not into celebrities and stuff, but I know of the big ones like Jay-Z. And the other night I had a dream that felt so real. I dreamt that I was laying in a bed with a robe on and it was so deep, this dream, so real. And Jay-Z was on this other bed next to me, talking to me. And he held my hand and we were talking like we were really, really good friends. Like, And I woke up from that dream the next day because it felt so real. And I promise you through my day, I was like, man, I didn't talk in my mind. I was like, man, I didn't talk to Jay-Z yet. I wonder what he's doing. He normally calls me around this time. And it was just so real in my mind as if we went way back from lifetimes, like, right? So dreams could be really be intense and, and feel real. We could really be in those particular realms while having them, you know? And they say that the life is actually the dream and, and the dream state is actually reality, so to speak. But anyway, I'm saying that because of how deep and profound dreams can be. But they often reveal things to you. You take what you want and, and, and toss the rest to the curb if you choose to. But for me, in my physical reality now, in the silly kind of way, which I still believe it wholeheartedly, me and Jay-Z are friends in my mind. <laughs> like we are linked some kind of way in this particular lifetime. And I'm, I'm thankful for that. And I love it. Just find a good and have fun with it. Let's see. Um, it was, it was, you were my guide helping clear out my house. See that? It makes sense. Beautiful. So I'm your guide here. You manifested me. All of you all that's here today manifested me through thought. This is how I came forward in your reality through thought because you had a question, whether it was a question about the law of assumption, whether it was a question about being needing help as a guide and, you know, and affirmations, whatever it is, relationships, whatever it is, you manifested me to come forward. Just think, out of all the people in the physical reality, you watching me right now, there's no coincidences. So you asked for me to come forward through thought. And I'm here through thought, giving you or helping you remember, so to speak, what you already know. Because the only reason why you're continuing to listen to me is because it resonates with you. Or you would have been looking at somebody else. 
And the only reason, even even when you look at maybe beauty, and some people may have stopped because, oh, this person looks handsome or this person looks good. It's the energy of that person. It's the resonance of that person. It's not necessarily what the person have on. It's not necessarily my words or my voice. It's not, no. It's the energy that draws you in. Let's see. I agree with that, and I'm grateful for you. Yeah, I'm grateful for you too. Open veil. Thank you. God is vibe. Let's see. Yes, I've been practicing the law of assumption lately, and then one day I saw you on here. See there? There you go. And so you gravitate like energetically to the people that you resonate with, you know? It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. So that's the law of attraction in full effect right there. Attracting you to like-minded tribe, like-minded people is always working. We're always doing this, whether we're conscious of it or unconscious of it. And it's just our powers. And as, a, as we unfold, we get so comfortable with our power and, and we can sit back and just realize that everything's perfect. And I'm just God having a human experience. And I never get this thing called life wrong. Never. There's no wrongs here. Let's see. Your videos help. Yeah. I haven't posted on um, YouTube as, in a while. I have some videos that I need to upload there. About 10 of them. I just haven't had the time really to upload them. About my journey and my experience when I went to uh, Sedona, Arizona. I want to share that with you because um, it really changed my life. You know, I was supposed to, um, wow, so many people are manifesting you. That's a beautiful thing. That's beautiful because it's a season for that. In the biblical text, it says, when will be the time or the season of thy coming? This is a time of the season for us to evolve to a higher place. Um, in consciousness to get to know thyself. This is that season. So anyway, when I was in Sedona, I um, actually I was walking away from TikTok before I went to Sedona. I was walking away from TikTok. I was walking really away to just be, you know, I had been on TikTok, you know, talking about my awakening experiences, talking about when I wanted to become a vegan and all these things here. And I, I, I just felt like I was just consume, so to speak, and I just needed a break. You kind of get tired of making content sometimes. I did at that point in my life. And I just wanted to explore and just be. And, and sure enough, I go to Sedona on a horse shock re retreat, and I went to go see this um this shaman out there. And, um, and she kind of told me what I already knew about my life, really, about... Um, my path in this particular life and what I came for it to do. And it all resonated me with me really well. And, um, <laughs> and it brought me back in so many words. It brought, brought me back because I'm a firm believer. I don't know how you all feel about this, but I believe. And it brought me back in so many words. It brought, brought me back because I'm a firm believer. I don't know how you all feel about this, but I believe that we come back in physical form over and over again until we evolve to this Christ conscious state. And so, um, <laughs> and I believe that I have in this lifetime came forward to fully evolve, but in past lifetimes, I decided that I didn't want to. That's that's what resonates with me. And she actually told me that. <laughs> and that was a shocker. That resonated with me before I met her. And when she told me that, she was like, you've been here to this place again. I mean, before, and you're here again in life. And you need to follow through. And so that's when I came up back over here on TikTok <laughs> to follow through. Because I and the reason why I believe that about myself is because I've experienced so much of deja vu. Deja vu is really indicators of you in your lifetime, how you've been here before and what you've seen. I mean, so much so that I will sit there and I will be like knowing what's going to happen through the day, like knowing who's about to come around the corner and stuff, those type of deja vus like, right? And so for me and my physical reality, I, the knowledge or the wisdom that you all might think that I have is something that 
I've been was supposed to, in my mind, do lifetimes before, but now this is the lifetime where I've chose to master myself in this particular avatar, you know, to master self, to conquer self, and to win with self, you know, because like even in physical form, we all come forth with crystals fluid, like for example, in our head as a baby, you know, the little soft spot. And that crystals fluid is our like our little backpack, so to speak. And we come to that day or that lifetime equipped with this here crystals fluid or juice to secrete when we want to rise to the occasion of being the Christ conscious one in physical form. <laughs> but like I say, you have all eternity to do it, but we come for it equipped to do it in each lifetime. It's just up to us. I'm just at a point in my lifetime where this is, this is my baby and this is what I want to do. I ran from it a lot. I fall back and then I come because it's a lot, but it's okay. To, that's why I always say it's okay to take breaks from it because it could be like overwhelming sometimes. It could be scary sometimes. It could be lonely sometimes. You know, it really can. It can be a whole bunch of mixed emotions. My mom is on here and my mom know I have been through some things. I will whisper to my mom or cry out to my mom that I'm hearing voices, that things are scary and, you know, you know, it's 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 a path, it's a journey, and it is. But it's real though. It's real. It's real because it's real within you. It's real, real within me. You know, and I wholeheartedly believe that. Or know rather that we all, just like in the biblical text, Jesus, the Christ conscious one, was trying to live deliver the message that ye are gods, and all of you are children of the most high and all of you have the same power, you know, and greater work shall you do. And so when you get to this state of being in this state of knowing, just like the biblical text, they say, he who has an ear, let him hear, you'll be able to understand what the parables were really talking about. And it was always about you. It was never about Uncle Job and in 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 Paul and Saul and Ezekiel and all the other people outside of you, they were you at different stages of your life. You at a different stage of your journey. Every last one of you have been through a stage where you were, you were Job per se, where you said that which I have feared the most has come upon me. Where you were the dry bones per se, that you just, you just needed breath to be entered into you so you could live. Where you was Lazarus, where you was sleeping, so to speak, that you, but you needed to come forth. And so we go through these different stages from the biblical text, all the way from, from atom, the inter energy side of us, atom, all the way to the Christ conscious one, lifetime to lifetime to lifetime to lifetime. And it's really all about renewing the mind and getting to know thyself. This is how you get to become the Christ conscious one. Lifetime after lifetime, renewing the mind, getting to know thyself. And when you get there, it's just, it's a beautiful place to be. It's a beautiful place to be. But you got to go on the mount sometimes to get there. And going on the mount to get there means going into your subconscious mind and renewing the mind. Like in the biblical text, Jesus will always go out into the wilderness or to the mount to pray, to meditate, to study, whatever. Meanwhile, the disciples were at the bottom of the mount going to sleep or whatever. Because they wasn't ready. It wasn't their season to become the Christ conscious one. It was his alone, the Christ conscious season to go on the mount, get into the wilderness and get to know thyself. Even sometimes you'll be missing from your friends or family, just like in the biblical text when Jesus, you know, was what, roughly around 13 when he ran away from his mother and father and, and they were looking for him. And he said, don't you know I was about my father's business? Don't you know that I had to, I had to take care of some of these matters up in here to get my mind right? And so just like us in the physical reality, it comes a point in spirituality where you got to separate yourself from your so-called friends, where you don't give a care about no Super Bowl game or whatever that happened yesterday. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm sorry. I don't even know who played yesterday because I was in here in the wilderness because we were, I just want to master just, just the matters of my heart and in my mind in the wilderness. And it's okay if I miss the physical reality. But I'm creating another physical reality when I go up in this wilderness because I let this here mind be in me and socially be in my physical reality. 
So I didn't miss a beat on that there. I probably missed the beat on what Mary J. Blige was doing, but it, it's okay, it's okay. Cause I got this here thing here covered. This here, this here brings me on from lifetime to lifetime. This here is how you become the Christ conscious one, you know? And so, so you have to make time to put yourself back in alignment with yourself so you can get to go in that wilderness and see the face of God. And then you too can say, I have seen God face to face and I have lived. <laughs> that was beautiful. Thank you. Let me see what I missed here. Um, I'm about to, am I, if I, did I talk longer than an hour? Because I wanted to do an hour. Let's see. I agree with that. I'm grateful for you. Okay. I read that one. Okay, your videos help. Yeah, wow, so many people are manifesting you. Thank you, thank you. Hey, Crone, I say, I say. Yes, yes, that's my mama over there talking about yes, yes, y'all. My mama up in here. My mama came to see that baby on the first day of school. <laughs> my first TikTok, I was clowning with her about it. Let's see. Well, we're first in a while. Yes, yes, speak that truth. Okay. What? Oh, something popped up. What creates paranormal? Will you go within? Oh my gosh, your fears. Sometimes we bring, let me see, love the talk. No problem, very beautiful. I'm gonna answer this one last one and then I'm gonna get up out of here because I think I'm past an hour. What creates that paranoia? Feel, yeah, oh yeah, it's 9.30, I went over. What creates the paranoia when going within? I had that problem years ago and I would honestly say, this is going to be my last question here. I would honestly say that it is from maybe religion, maybe old thoughts, maybe, um, you know, old beliefs or whatever. And for me, I know that it is religion that created my paranoia, you know, because in religion, you know, religion will kind of like have you believing that it is the devil in there. If you go in here, you're going to meet the devil. Don't go in here ever in religion per se, right? And so I remember when I first started off and I would go and I would try to meditate and I would go. And so at that time, I'm new at meditating. And so what I used to do then, I would um, go in. I would imagine myself kind of like grounded, anchored into the universe. But I was flying, though. And I was in the sky at the same time, in the sky with the puffy clouds and I'm looking for my peace. But I had like a card that was connected to the universe so I wouldn't like fly away into the galaxies. That was fear right there trying to avoid all that. But anyway, I'm up there with the birds. They were white little doves. And I, would, I knew all of them by name. And I would look at them and fly with them and say hi to them and say how fun it felt and how good the wind felt. And it was a beautiful night, to, a day to be flying. And one day I went up in there and them darn birds turned into black hawks. Fear. Then black, you know, black, you know, at that time coming from religion, you know, black darkness, dark, that's devil and all that, right? So they had to be black. And they began to come flying toward me and peck on me. Like, and they were like pulling my skin, like. And I said, you know what? I ain't meditating no more. <laughs> if the birds, I don't know what's coming next. I ain't going up in there no more. And you know, that was a stumbling block for me because that was my own fears. That was my inside of me. And so really when you're doing this work, really you're purging you from your old self. And so it was, it was a long, long time before I went back up in there. I told, I even told my mama, she up on here. I told my mama about this here. It was a long time before I went back up in there to meditate because I was scared of the birds. But really I was scared of my, my, I, I hadn't cleared my limited beliefs and scared of my own power is what it really be. Because behind fear becomes the greatest moments of your life. See, if I had not have ever went back that day, I would have stagnated my growth from being here for you all on this day. So 
when I finally tr when tried to go back in, I would hear in my inner voice, which was my voice telling me, showing me my fear saying, come on, come on, meditate. I'm going to get your ass. You know, like, like I had a boogeyman in my mind for my meta manifestations or meditation time that I had to clear. See, it's always the work that I have to do in me because as within, so without. So you have to work on that fear and figure out, you got to ask your question, your question as to why, why am I afraid to meditate? And if I would have, if I would have known, I didn't know about asking my subconscious mind a question because God never asked yourself a question that he is, you don't know the answer to already. If I would ask my subconscious mind that question, I would have stumbled upon my reason why I wouldn't have had to be up out of there for so long, stunting my own growth. I could have simply said to me, why am I, why am I afraid to meditate? Well, you're afraid because then they're going birds turn black on your wings. That's why you're afraid. But, but, but why? Why, why, why did, where did this fear come from? But why? Well, you know, your mama, your auntie, you know, your, your uncle, everybody, their family into this thing called church and religion. And so in church and religion, they, they kind of don't, don't play this yet, you know? So, but why? You know, if I would have constantly got to why, I would have figured out it's deeply re rooted in my old programming. And so now I'm going against my old programming and I'm a little bit afraid now to explore something new. My, my subconscious mind is trying to protect me because it likes to do things on repeat over and over again. And when I deviate from that repeat, then it starts to give me these things like fear. It starts to give me these things like doubt. But I have to go through, I have to press myself through to get to the other side because like we said on the other side of that fear may be the greatest moment of your life you're fearing the unknown but in this case this is the greatest moment of your life because you are expanding back to Christ consciousness when you clear yourself from that kind of fear and get to know thyself there's only greatness over there it's only greatness. And if you could reprogram that subconscious mind, going back to the foundation of all of this here, that all is God. And you can never get this thing called life wrong. You can never, all you do, the L's and W's that you have are learning and winning. Then when you stand on that foundation in that knowing, that trust, that belief in your subconscious mind, that wait, I'm only going to learn. Wait, I'm only going to win. Then you can let go of the fear. Anyway, that was my last question. Um, let's see. Yeah. Oh, my mom said you scared me. <laughs> yeah. Trying to tell her the stories about the um, birds and all. Extreme gratitude. Thank you, Long Star, for joining. Thank you, I am Priscilla. There you go. I love you. Oh, I love you too, babe. You better teach me. Oh, cool, cool. I'll teach you all some more. Namaste. Hey, Terry. Thanks for joining. Thanks, everybody, for being here. This video was from my heart to yours. Remember, you are God having a human experience. And you can be, do, and have anything that you put your mind on, baby. Be blessed. Hey, newbie and melanin. I see you, babe. Bye, Kiki. Yeah, have a good night, babe.